So a couple of years ago, I did a video where we took a circle and I showed you three different methods for finding the center of a circle using some common squares that you'll find on a job site. And I want to go a little bit more in depth on one of those, or actually my favorite version of that, and it's called Thales Theorem. There was some misconceptions with that. So we start out with a circle and we're going to use a set square. And all we have to do is land that set square so that the apex of the 90 degree angle here lands on the circle. And then we can draw a line here and we can draw a line here. Now, where those two points cross the circle, we can then connect them. So let me line this up the best I can. One there and one there. And then all you have to do is turn the square in a different orientation close to 90 degrees. And actually we're gonna, one of the misconceptions for this is that you had to measure everything, the, the two legs. And that is not true. In fact, the square can be off. So obviously these two cores are completely different lengths and we're gonna just scoot this over so that this is right on the edge. And we're gonna do the same thing in a different orientation. And now we're gonna connect the two points there it's a little tough to see because the angle is so shallow, but we'll do our best here. And then we'll connect those two points. Now where those two lines cross, that will pick up the center of the circle. This is called Thales Theorem, and it's one of my all-time favorite ways of picking up the center of a circle. And I've used this to pick up the centers of grain silos that were 60 feet in diameter using a different method. Well, it's actually the same method, but using different tools. So let's look at a larger version of this and I'll show you how it works with some more advanced construction tools. So I'm gonna do this on a bit larger scale. The first thing I'm gonna do is lay out a, a circle using a fairly large compass. This circle is gonna be a little short of three feet in overall diameter. And instead of using squares, because this circle is so big, we're gonna be using a laser level in order to pick up our square points. Now a laser level, that, like this Hilti, will be good for, I think it's one plus or minus 1 16th of an inch in 200 feet. So all we have to do is land our third axis so that the point is on the circle, and then that'll give us two additional points. Now once I've set those, I'm gonna connect those points across there and I just want to show that this will pick up the exact center so once we get one we'll have a diameter and then when we cross it going in a different direction we'll have a different diameter and it really makes no difference where you set the square and there's no measuring involved or, or the laser I apologize not the square there's no measuring involved in this so we'll get one orientation and then we'll get another orientation and as you can see they cross perfectly in the center of one another. And then you can check it with a third one if you want. I just set the laser up here with cords of different lengths to show that no measuring actually has to be done in order for this to work. So I've drawn out a circle using a compass and then I have inscribed using a set square, a triangle in that circle so that the apex of our triangle, which I'm designated as point B, lands on our circle. Now where the other two points cross, I've designated those as points A and point C, and then using a straight edge, I connected points A and C to give us our diameter. You can see that that crosses right through our origin point of our circle, the indention in there in the paper where the compass set. Now, what Thales theorem says is that in a circle, if you inscribe a triangle within that circle so that the points land on the circle itself and where line AC makes up the diameter of the circle, angle ABC will always be 90 degrees. Now this is fairly easy to prove geometrically. So two things to keep in mind. Uh, first is that in any given triangle, all the interior angles of the triangle add up to 180 degrees. The second thing we need to keep in mind is that in an isosceles triangle, an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two equal legs, that the angles opposite of the third point will be identical. It's kind of the definition of an isosceles triangle. So we'll keep that in mind. Any angle, 
the interior angles will add up to 100 and a, or excuse me, any triangle, the interior angles will add up to 180 degrees. And then in an isosceles triangle has two equal angles. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to draw a connecting point to break this big triangle up into two smaller isosceles triangles. And the way that we know that they're isosceles triangles is that the lines that they create uh, AO, BO, and CO are all the radius of the circle. So in this triangle, BOC, there are two legs that are identical, which means that this angle and this angle are equal. And then in AOB, this is the radius and this is the radius. So this angle and this angle are also equal. Now we're going to designate those angles. We're going to call these two angles X and we're going to call these two angles Y. So, if we write out a simple equation for this, we can write this out as x plus x plus y plus y equals 180 degrees. So, we'll do that. x plus x plus y plus y equals 180 degrees. Now, we can write that a little differently by putting it as 2x plus 2y equals 180 degrees. And then we can simplify that by dividing each side by 2, and when we do, 2's cross out here, and this becomes 90. 180 divided by 2 equals 90. So now we're left with x plus y equals 90 degrees. Then if we go back to our triangle and we look again, the two angles that make up this corner here, or this angle of the larger triangle, are x plus y, and they equal 2. 90 degrees, and that is Thales' theorem. Now, the more jaded among us are going to be quick to point out that you cannot produce a perfect circle and that the lines that are needed in order to pick up the perfect center of a circle will be so finite that they would be naked or invisible to the naked eye. And while technically that is all true, it kind of reminds me of a story. So about 15 years ago, I was installing some equipment in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it just so happened that the owner was giving me a tour of his facility. Now what they were doing is they were building, putting the building components, they were actually manufacturing and uh, building components for a building that was going to be put into a nuclear facility. Now keep in mind, this building was 30 feet tall, if I remember correctly. And as we were touring it, we went through the fab shop and then we went into the paint, the prep and the paint, uh, primer actually. And I noticed that all of the tops of the rafters were taped off and they weren't priming those surfaces. And so I asked the owner, why, why would you not prime the tops of the rafters? And he said, you would never believe me if I told you. Turns out that in their contract, the engineering department who have the building had specified that they could not paint or prime the tops of the rafters or the mating surfaces for the columns to the rafters because, I kid you not, it would change the height of the building by four mil. Just goes to show you, there's all kinds out there. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch, and I hope this is helpful for you. I'll see you in the next one.